A house is made of wood and stone, but only love can make a home. Welcome to the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, helping you make your home into one you'll love even more. On News Radio Wood 1300 and 1069 FM. Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Haley, happy Saturday. Happy Saturday, Dan. It is an auspicious day. I've got to lead with something that actually I'm hesitant to do online or on air, but I'm going to. Um, I'm tendering my resignation. Shut up. To Repcolite. No, I am. I am. You are not. I am. I am done. It's my two weeks. And the reason is uh, because I've got uh, got an email this week from Keanu Reeves, the actor. I did. And, you know, I know it's a little, you know, I'm going out on a limb here, but uh, I'm just going to share the email. Uh, Keanu, I didn't even realize we were connected, but... (laughs) He has reached out to me, and I got this wonderful, warm email, and here it is. Hello. Mm -hmm. As part of my plans to give back the love and support I've received in my career, because we all know Keanu, he is loved, and he likes to love. Um, As part of that plan, he has secured USD, US dollars, Mm -hmm. 10 million of them, Uh, with his private investment bank. And he has set up a simple question and answer uh, that I need to click and fill out, and he's going to give me half the money. Uh-huh. I get to share that money with my community. So if I were anybody out there listening, before I leave... why he chose you? No, I'm just pretty sure... No, I don't know exactly why. But I can share it with orphanages, schools, <laughs> churches, anybody I want. So why would I need to keep working? I'm going to have half of ten million dollars. Yes. Yeah, oh, in the second half of his email, it drops to one million dollars. He lost a zero. Interesting. Yes. Well, that's not quite as so, much to retire. Huh? No. Yes. The whole thing is obviously a scam. Yeah. I'm obviously not leaving Repcolite, at least of my own volition. <laughs> we'll find out what Repcolite <laughs> thinks. But I got that email today, or or earlier this week, and I thought. How ridiculous. That's so ridiculous. You know, I love those emails because they're very funny. Yes. But people do get suckered. No, I know. And I thought, let's let's just lead with that on the show. We've got a lot of stuff coming up today. I guess yes. let's talk about that very quickly. We're going to be talking about some paint projects that you and I tackled that are our favorites. Of all time. Favorite of all time paint projects. It's riveting material. You're going to want to be here. <laughs> we'll also be talking with uh, Ginger Herman. Just I was going to say Herman. Sue Prins and Ginger Herman. It's yeah. just Ginger this time talking about the state of the real estate market. And if you're all freaked out about the market. I think she has some words of wisdom that yeah, will calm you down. She's going to walk you down off yeah. the ledge. But right now, let's go back to scams. Scams are front and center right now, this time of year especially. Yeah, what is it about this time of year? Well, the reason is because people are feeling happy and feeling yeah. good. So there's all kinds of charity scams mm-hmm. that show up. And we're also buying a lot of stuff online yeah. and making a lot of purchases. Right. And so there's just an easy in. And there's just a ton of different scams. We've got a little bit of time to go over a couple of them that are really, really prevalent and I want to make you aware of and some things you can do to avoid them. Now, one of them are is a delivery scam. And this has happened to me a lot of really? times. Yeah, it's not not delivery. Like, the, the product shows up and somebody takes it. That's a problem, too. It's yes. not so much a scam as theft. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> the scam part is when you get an email from UPS or FedEx telling you that your shipment, your package is delayed mm-hmm. or it's been lost yeah. or something. And it asks you to sign in if you have any questions. Click, click this link yeah. and give us your info and we'll figure out where your package is. And it's tricky because a lot, you know, what the they're doing is they're just throwing a ton of them out there. Right. And they're hoping that they're going to land in somebody's inbox who literally has a package right. coming. And we freak out. You know, I freaked out before. Oh, this package that was supposed to be for Christmas maybe is going to be delayed. Maybe I better click that link and find out what's going on. It's a scam. All they yeah. want to do is harvest your information from that link. So what can you do about that? How can you avoid that or help your parents or you know whoever avoid these scams? Well, the first thing is to hover over the sender's email. Yes. You know, in on your program, whatever you're looking at, especially on a computer or a laptop or something, you can hover over it with the mouse and it will show you the real sending address. Right, because it'll disguise itself as from being from UPS. But right. once you expand that and you see the full address, it's something ridiculous. You realize that it has nothing to do with UPS. That's not a company's email address. Right. I would never, ever click a link 
uh, that came in an email, even if it looks like mm-hmm. it's from the real company, just go to their own web page exactly. that you know is theirs and navigate from there. Yes. Call somebody from that company and figure it out. Don't click the links in the email. So there's one of those. You know, I just received a text two weeks ago, a text from Amazon telling me that somebody from another country was repeatedly trying to hack into my account. Really? So I needed to click this link in the text and enter my Amazon info. <laughs> that one almost got me. You know, as dumb as it is in retrospect, at the time, it kind of freaked me out. Well, Somebody's I mean, trying to just, get into exactly. my account. They make us emotional. We have an immediate reaction. And then hopefully in that time, mm-hmm. we do something that they can use. Yeah. So avoid all of those things. If you get a text from Amazon or anybody, again, go to the main website. Right. And look it up. Do not uh, click the link. Don't click those links. One that I didn't know about, I it's a little depressing. Well, all of these are depressing. This one's more so to me because I've made use of this. But the gift cards in the stores, you know, you go to stores and you see all these different gift cards from all these different places. Yeah. You can buy them anywhere. Yeah. Turns out those can be tampered with, and that's a, a common scam. They pull the little security tape off the back, write down or take a picture of the, the code that you need, mm-hmm. put the tape back, and then when it's activated... They literally can drain it the minute it's activated. Wow. Now, I don't know how prevalent that is, but the safe way around that is to buy your gift cards directly from the store. You know, if you've got to go online to their website and buy directly from that store that you want that gift card to be from, buy it from them. Or walk into the store, the literal brick and mortar building and buy the gift card there. So a lot of scams out there. Pay attention. Help your parents and loved ones pay attention. And don't get burned. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll be in the studio with Ginger Herman from Sue Prince Group 5 Star Real Estate talking about the state of the real estate market. That's just ahead. Stay tuned. Helping you turn your house into your dream home. This is the Repco Light Home Improvement Show, presented by Benjamin Moore on News Radio Wood 1300 and 1069 FM. And we're back, and Haley and I are in the studio with Ginger Herman from Sue Prince Group Five Star Real Estate. Yeah. Ginger, thanks Hi. for being here. Thanks for having me. It's yeah. Been a little bit. It's been a bit. And last time you were here, I don't think the real estate market was as sad, or people weren't as sad about it. That's a great way of putting it. But yeah. right now, We've got a lot of sad people out there. Things have changed dramatically yes. over this year, even yeah. since the last time you guys were on. Normally, right. you're here with Sue Prince. Yeah, my Thelma to my Louise. Well, <laughs> which one is uh, which one's the rebel? I don't know. I thought they were Sue's both the criminals, rebel. So. so I'm not sure. <laughs> What okay, exactly very saying. very valid point. But my <laughs> Thelma, whichever one's the rebel, she's gone. All right. Sue's the rebel. Sue's, Sue's the, the rebel. rebel. <laughs> well, she's not here, so you, you've you come with a bunch of stuff. You want to talk us maybe down from the ledge? Yes. Yeah. And I, I have no idea what you're going to say to us, so oh, speak okay. comforts to us because people are worried. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to try to keep the conversation really positive today because... It seems like all of our clients are coming to us and they're just really down. Like they're like, my interest rate is way up. Right. And they're honestly, most people are freaking out about the interest rate. Like everyone's head is so wrapped around that that they're not seeing the bigger picture. So we're trying to sit down with clients and like, okay, yes, interest rate is a big deal, but like let's broaden this out. And the market is still really good. Yeah. Like and look at the whole picture rather yes, than like focusing on that one just thing. Just focusing on the one thing because there's so many different things to just the interest rate. I mean, obviously that affects your payment. Yeah. Because um, I think the last time we were here, we were telling you guys it was slowing down a little mm-hmm. bit. But now some realtors are just going to flat out tell you like they're going to be like, it's really slow. I'm really slow. And it's it's not that we it's very cyclical. Like winters for us in right. Michigan have always been slower. Right. Like people don't want to move in the snow. People don't want to move when they're halfway through a school year. Mm-hmm. Like parents don't want to move their kids halfway through the school year. So that's always been a part of our market anyway. And then of course, yes, the interest rates did increase and that made people back off. So maybe they're we're at about what, like seven point five right now? Well, so they actually dipped down. Okay. As of uh Wednesday. They were probably 
I want to say in like the mid sixes to high okay, sixes. Okay, so they've come down a little bit. Yes. So the inflation rate that came back to the feds did decrease. Um, it's not increasing as a crazy of a rate. So we did see that dip in the interest rates. Now, will it stay till the rest of the year? I don't know. Yeah. I wish I had a I wish <laughs> crystal I had a ball. Crystal ball to tell you. Because, I mean, most of the economists and lenders were telling us like we could hit the eights. We could maybe bre- like go over eight. So, of course, people are panicking. Right. Will that happen by Christmas or a little bit after Christmas? I don't know. So we're kind of trying to tell people, like, let's focus on what we have right now and let's move from that. All right. So what do we have right now and how do we move from that? (laughs) Yeah. So what we're trying to get people to focus on is let's start with what is your comfortable mortgage payment? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's not look at the interest rate. What do you actually want to spend monthly? Okay. Here's what you can afford um, when we look at the purchase price. Now, people that were searching with us in maybe like April, May, June, July, that's when we still had the shark tank. It was crazy market, multiple offers. You were paying over appraisal. It was insane. Now, now homes, we have more homes on the market. Mm -hmm. We have less competition out there because buyers have stepped back. Mm -hmm. So this is why we're like, okay, you guys, you have to dive in now. Well, there's some negotiating room at this point, I would think, whereas before there was such little on the inventory and then you had so many people looking that, I mean, when I was looking, we were offering, you know, $50,000 over Mm -hmm. asking price. Now... You're looking at a list price and potentially taking money off of that, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah, because if you're the only offer in, you don't have to come in at list price. We could come in lower. Or if it's not just list price, like let's say you want some of your closing costs covered, Mm -hmm. let's do that. Let's get some of your closing costs covered. Um, Less people waiving inspections. Yeah. So now you know for sure you're going to get a good house. You're not chancing that. I also see a lot of people... um, because our I, I don't like saying our home values have come down. They technically have since maybe like June or July sure. of this year. They have come down, but let's look at it to last year. We're still up from last year. Okay. But yeah, the people that were searching earlier this summer, you probably have now a lower purchase price that you're looking at these houses, you know? So there's a lot of positive in that regard. There is a lot of positive. I had a lender sit down with a buyer and they printed out a sheet for them, like what their costs and everything were going to be involved at a lower interest rate with a higher purchase price mm-hmm. in July and then to now. And you guys, it was almost the same. Yeah. Because the purchase price is actually lower, even though you have a higher interest rate. It's about the it, same. It like, balances out ultimately. Yes. Yep. And now so. you don't have the high pressure. I mean, I feel yes. like that's, I don't know, we should be talked about because when I was looking just a year ago, it was so high pressure yeah. and the stress behind looking for a house and having to make a decision almost before you even walk into the house. Yeah. Well, and as you to weren't whether you're going to make an offer. Right. And you weren't you weren't in the in the boat where you were making great decisions. Yeah. You personally, Haley, yeah. Yeah. you know, because you were thrown into that. Right. You were just making, you know, from my point of view, you know, I wasn't looking for a house. So I wasn't in that particular situation previously, you know, years back when I did, mm-hmm. there were so many things that we did that were just normal for yeah. how you buy a house and Your time, all these safety all steps. All due diligence. Right. Things. Yeah. Haley was almost planning out ridiculous offers before you'd even seen the house. But right. that's the situation you yeah, were in. That's just yeah, what you had to do. To do. So that's a huge benefit for people looking now. Well, and I think I've read so many articles about buyer's remorse from the pressure of those situations that I don't think you're going to have now because you do have time to actually make smart decisions, have inspections. Some of us can have remorse no matter what (laughs) the situation is. I will find a way to feel bad and guilty about my purchase no matter what. Oh, good. But maybe it's less likely. (laughs) Less remorse. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you, did you feel you personally felt like you had to settle for your house or no? I mean, I think I ended up in the best possible scenario. I think... That's true Based for your on what I have now, looking at some of the houses that I, right at the beginning of the search, had offered on, I think 
like, thank God I didn't get those houses. Those houses, yeah. yeah. <laughs> those maybe you would have been settling. Yeah. Oh, I'm, sh- yeah, I'm definitely. also telling some of my buyers, like, you, I think there's, there's the less pressure mm-hmm. and with the less competition, right. you feel like you don't have to settle. Let's exactly. say a buyer comes to me and they're like, we have to have two bathrooms. Well, sorry, you don't get two bathrooms because all the houses on the market are only one bathroom and you got to pick one of those. Mm-hmm. Now they have more options right. to look at. And it's like, oh, we don't have to get rid of that bathroom that we really wanted. Right. No, it was insane. Haley was I remember one where you were talking about, well, it's got foundation issues, I think. And we'll, we'll pay, you know, but I can get that covered with this loan that'll do this or remember that. Yeah. The big and I kept thinking, what is going on? But yet that's the situation. Yeah. yeah. So that would have been a huge settle. You know, for the the one that you ended up with, I think you're yes. you're thrilled with. Yeah. And not to say that my buyers that purchased earlier this year, not to say that they have bad houses because they don't. Right. Like well, they we don't want it, that story to get no. out there. Yeah. <laughs> like they made it work for what they needed and they still made sure that they loved the house. It mm-hmm. wasn't like, wow, we're buying something that we hate because most buyers right. just backed out. Like we're not going to yes. buy a house then, you yeah. know. So they still bought good houses. And to be honest, they bought at a better interest rate than what it is now. Sure. So even though we've seen a little bit of dip in, mm-hmm. in home values, you're still higher than last year. And to be honest, it's still going to go up next year. Yeah. So like those people, I don't want them to feel like, crap, we bought it the worst time. We have a worse house. Yeah. No, that's no. not the case. I don't think so. No. I think it's just you have so much less pressure. Mm-hmm. And I think for me, I was also it was the first time I was looking for my home. And when all were... of that was new. And I was, you know, moving from a one bedroom apartment where it was like anything is better <laughs> than what I have now. Yes. Right. Your situation was different than a lot of people, but yeah. the pressure was the same. Yes. And mm-hmm. it was just unreal. Yeah. The, so some of the decisions that you would be willing to make. Is yeah. A blessing. Mm-hmm. So a couple of things with the rates, too, because I know that's what everyone's focusing on. And I understand that that obviously affects your payment. If you. Most people are not in their house for 30 years. If you were to look at your your payments for the last, you know the next 30 years at mm-hmm. that current interest rate in the sixes or sevens, yes, that's very overwhelming. However, I'm trying to remind people they're supposed to come back down next year. If they don't come back down next year, they're most likely still going to come down in some sort of future, right? Is it six months? Is it 12 months? Is it 18 months? It's eventually going to come down sure. when our market kind of settles out a little bit and becomes really healthy. We're healthier now, but... We have a ways to go yet. So it's like, let's get into the house now. You have less competition. You don't have to pay over appraisal. You can get what you really want. Ride it out until the interest rates drop. Just refinance. Yeah. We we can make that happen. And that's what lenders are talking to their buyers about now. That makes sense. It's better to get in the house now. Okay, I'm trying to think of the phrase that they use. Uh, marry the house, date your interest rate. <laughs> That's it. See? Marry the house. Let's get you in the house. Stay in the house. Yeah. But let's date the interest rate. As soon as it drops, let's refinance you. Yeah. So that's kind of what they're pushing people. Not, uh, not pushing, but they're trying to tell Recommending, people. Recommending, yeah. It's not like you're stuck with that interest rate forever. Yeah. They also have um, our preferred lender that we use does a two-to-one um, buy-down program. And how it goes is for, let's say... Just to use easy numbers, let's say the interest rates are at 7% today. Um, For the next two years, it's going to be, I don't like saying adjustable, but for the first year, they're going to buy it down two points. Mm -hmm. So to 5%, you're going to have for the first year. Second year is going to be 6%. Then when we get to that third year, you're back up to where the market was, which was 7%, because I share that it was 7%. Yeah. So some people are using that program because they're like, okay, for the next year, Let's get us to the 5%. Let's ride that out until the interest rates drop. Then we're Mm -hmm. just going to refinance. Or your worst case scenario with that program is in three years, you're at 7%. Sure. Which is what you were at now. Right. But you had a couple of years at a lower lower interest rate, lower payments, that kind of thing. So there's programs out there. It's not like you're just stuck with what the market is at now. You can also buy points down, so you can decrease that if you want to. But I would say majority of lenders are saying, let's save the money. Let's not buy down. Let's just refinance you in, you in a year whenever those rates do come down. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, we're kind of hitting the end of this segment. I do want to talk to sellers. Yeah. You know, because they're probably, well, wait a minute. What's the good news for us? <laughs> they Is are, there any? They are freaking out. Do you have time to wait with us? Oh, yeah. All right. So we're going to take a break. When we come back, we'll be in the studio still with Ginger Herman from Sue Prince Group Five Star Real Estate talking specifically to sellers a little bit, yeah. Yeah. giving you some hope, right? <laughs> yes. Hope? Okay, oh, good. It's yeah. all coming up just ahead. Stay tuned.
If you want to take your DIY skills up a rung, the Repco Light Home Improvement Show is here to give you a boost on News Radio Wood 1300 and 1069 FM. And we're back, and Haley and I are in the studio with Ginger Herman from Suprins Group Five Star Real Estate Leaders. You're really right? nailing that today. I am. I, <laughs> you, I, you got it. I knew you were coming in, so I practiced and practiced and practiced. The kids said I had it down. And I'm good to go. So anyway, yeah, we've been talking about the real estate market. We've had you in multiple times throughout the year. Yeah. Normally you're here with Sue. Yeah. And yeah, we kind of go through what the situation is. And it's been a f- crazy year. Mm-hmm. We started, I was going to say fun. <laughs> I don't know that it was a fun year. But so many things have changed from the yes. beginning. You know, the very first time you were in, we were talking about how you just got to jump into this tank and everybody's trying to get a house and there's multiple yeah, offers and it's tank. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And now things have slowed down a bit, and people are bummed about interest rates. Everybody's down on the market. We were talking about that yep. in the previous segment, that there's reasons to still be positive. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of things you can do. If we, if yeah. you miss that segment and you are in the market for a house, definitely go to the repcolite.com and catch that podcast, and you'll catch the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Right now, I guess before we jump into sellers, is there any more that you wanted to talk to the buyers about? Any more info that you had for them, or are we ready to transition to sellers? I think I'll just say this last piece of advice. of There's a lot of news out there right now. Mm-hmm. Don't trust everything that you see. Definitely call your your preferred or whoever you're using for a realtor and a lender. Ask them first. Yeah. Like, don't just, just so trust. headlines or just like, yes. click the article yes. and read. It's inflammatory. And also Michigan. national versus regional, mm-hmm. right? Like, our West Michigan market, I, I think, is still doing really good overall as if, if you look at other states and other areas. So it's kind of like... Call call your local mm-hmm. realtor, call your lender, ask them first before you just say, oh, we're going to wait till the spring to buy. It's, it might not be the best situation for mm-hmm. you to wait. Well, that's so. good advice. Yeah. Don't know. completely freak out. I always no. roll with that. That seems sound <laughs> advice. Lead with the freak out. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I like to, you know. If I ever have somebody break into the house, I am leading with the freak out because I'm assuming that's going to really. That you know, might turn them around and say, I think I'm not. I'm I don't not want anything to do with here. this guy. He is nuts. I'm going to another house. See ya. All right. Let's talk to the sellers because we had a lot of, yeah. you know, some positive spin for the buyers. You know, sellers went from, you know, I put the sign in the yard and people just walk up with pounds and, you know, bags of cash and they offer them to me. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that way right now. So what's positive for sellers? Yeah. To stay positive with sellers, because I'll start off with saying a lot of people are like, oh, the home home values are, you know, dipping. And they are probably less than what they were um, in our in our highest summertime. So you, you may have gone down a little bit. But um, we're still focusing on the fact that you are higher than you were last year. Mm -hmm. So you are still if you would have sold last year and you're and you're going to sell this month, you know, October and November, you're still you're still higher than what you were last year. You're just a little bit down maybe from the summer market. That makes sense. And to be honest, we are just changing our market strategy. So beforehand, it was kind of like a where's your keys? I'm going to put the sign out. We're going to sell your house and it's going to go and you don't really have to do much. Whereas now. I mean, it's case by case with each house, but we might walk in and say, like, let's paint a couple rooms Mm -hmm. to get it a little bit more neutral. Um, Maybe we want to stage a couple of rooms, like either they don't have furniture in general. Mm -hmm. Right. Or, um, you know, your furniture might not match what people are to taste. And we do staging for free. So we'll just tell you, like, you know what, we're going to bring in some of this furniture. Yeah. Let's get rid of a couple of these items. Um, Focusing on deep cleaning and making your house shine. And then also just when we post on the market and how we're going to list your house price wise is what we're really just kind of changing up because we are still getting our sellers multiple offers. Okay. It's just the price tag we might put for your listing price may make your jaw like, what? I don't well, want to sell my house. though so yes. that you get more people in the door, yep, right? Yep, we are lowering it so we get more people in the door. Um I'm trying to think the last time I had like a crazy multiple offer situation. Honestly, in the summer, we were up to like 15, 20 offers. It's not like that anymore. Maybe it's more like a three to five, okay. you know, kind of range. Yeah. But we can still get you multiple offers to still get you an, an amazing price. Yeah. It's not like doom and you're gloom doomed, for sellers. Right. No, you're not. We're just changing the way that we market it. And you just have to do a little bit more, right? Yes. Like you got to put some lipstick on now. <laughs> yes. Lipstick yep. on the pig? Is that yeah. what you're yeah. talking about? Okay. And it's kind of hard now because we're heading into a season of like your curb appeal on your house isn't going to 
necessarily look the best. But Mine goes still... up when the snow comes down. <laughs> oh, hides looks, all the weeds. <laughs> it looks way better. <laughs> like if you don't have grass, now yeah. they can't see that. That place is amazing. <laughs> yeah, by now. <laughs> don't... That's true. Let's wait to take pictures until it snows then. <laughs> yeah. No, but we're, okay, fall, all the leaves have dropped. Let's get all the leaves out. Mm -hmm. Um, My mom recently just listed a house, and she's like, let's go buy a bunch of mums. And we didn't even plant them in the ground, but we just dug a tiny little hole, right? You set them all up. Right. Like, we're still, you know, like you said, it's not necessarily lipstick on a pig, but we're making the house look a little bit more attractive to the buyers out there so that, I mean... Like I said, we have more options. We just have more inventory now, which is great. It's really healthy. You just have to make your house stand out now. Yep. We have to set years aside. Yeah. So we'll even often, the week that we're going to list it, we'll look at what your competition is going to be and say, okay, how can we that beat out sense. that competition? Yeah. They have this. They have this. Is that in your budget to mm-hmm. where we can either go purchase it or let's bring someone in here to either paint for you or whatever it is that we need to do right. to make us beat out that com- competition? We're going to do that mm-hmm. well and i think i mean obviously we're in the paint industry so it feels very self-serving to say that you know paint can really transform spaces really easily but it, it can. really can yeah <laughs> and if you're selling i that would be my first go-to yeah is, okay let's neutralize the space a little make yeah. it as bright as possible and yeah i mean it's not hard work no it just takes some time yeah, we often honestly start there. Like we'll pay attention to the walls first. Yeah, whether and sometimes it's not even that the paint color is bad; it's that it hasn't been painted in sure like seven, ten years, and Got you like have kids scuff and dogs. marks, and, right? Yeah, let's just do a quick freshen up paint. So then it, I don't know, it transforms the whole room. If you just have fresh paint, it like. It does. It looks- well, it's all the stuff that we don't see because we live in the house yes. that other people do see because they have fresh eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So that's just some things that we're focusing on with our seller. How can how can we beat out the competition that's that's on the market right now? It's kind of a fun game, honestly. <laughs> Beating out and, the seller, yeah. the other sellers. Well, and Sue and I are not afraid to get our hands dirty and work. Like both her and I have spent hours painting clients' houses inside and out, staging. We like I said, we offer that for free. We'll spend time. Like we're not afraid to do that work. So okay, some sellers okay. it's overwhelming, but we're mm-hmm. like, we got you. Don't worry. All right. I've got a question. Okay. So you you do that. Help me understand this whole process. I say I want to sell my house. Mm-hmm. And I bring you in and you say, okay, these rooms need to be repainted. This is horrible. I can't believe people live here. <laughs> and once I quit crying and you realize, okay, he's going to need help doing this. Mm-hmm. Let's say you help me mm-hmm. accomplish that. Yep. And then I say, okay, my mission is accomplished. I no longer want to sell. <laughs> what do I owe you? Wow. See, that's what I'm thinking. You went there. I would. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> is this who you work with? <laughs> I that's would never do that for real. No, be your Thelma. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> we, we talked in the first segment. Yeah. Uh, without Thelma Sue here. Louise. Yeah. That, <laughs> Sue was your Thelma or your Louise. I decided both are criminals. Both are criminals. And yeah, now I ended up being the one who's scamming the system. Yep. We so, don't want that to happen, right? No, correct. <laughs> I, it's it's kind of a good point that you brought that up. We sign a listing contract with sellers yeah. before we start to do that. Because usually our first appointment with a seller, to be honest, it's not to sign the contract. We're going to walk through your house and like get a feel for the house. Then we're going to do some research on price point. Here's the range that I think you're currently in. Here's a couple updates that we can do. This is the range I want to get you to. Mm -hmm. Here's how I want to get you there. We're going to lay out what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, who's going to pay for it, things like that. Sure. Then, okay, if if you want to do that, you're ready for that, let's sign the contract. Then let's get to that work. What does a contract look like? How does that work? The listing contract? Basically stating here's the price point that we're going to list it at. Here's when we're going to put it on the market. Here's how long you're going to work with me. Things like that. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right. So So you can't scam the system, Dan. Not easily. (laughs) It does say right in there, like, if you breach the contract, we can seek out marketing monies that we Mm. used, which would be the paint. Yeah. I wouldn't mess with you guys. (laughs) Not Thelma and Louise. <laughs> no, I don't want that coming down on me. No, I, you know, as you walk through all of that, I think it's just really, really makes the case for why you'd bring a realtor in. Yeah. You know, we've made that case when you're a buyer and the market is crazy. Right. Yeah. You know, I can see where it was really enticing for sellers to just 
put a for sale by owner in the yard. Oh yeah. You know, and, and there were reasons still to to bring a realtor in, but yeah. especially now to get you yeah. know all the info that you've got. That's just not easily accessible to. Well, and some sellers still come to us thinking that the price points are still where the summer is. Whether they just you know like. I don't, I don't want to say necessarily elderly clients, but anyone that's not really super in tune with either news or social media and they're, you mm-hmm. know, seeing this stuff come through. Yeah. They're kind of still stuck in those price points. And then that's where we're coming in and say, well, we're going to we're going to shoot for that price range. But then here's what we're going to have to do to your house in order to reach where you were maybe at that summer. No, I know you, you just said a lot of really interesting things. Elderly. When you, when you say elderly. Got stuck there. Yeah. What is elderly? <laughs> and do I fit into that? No. Okay. There. That's all I need to know. Okay. If anyone asked me that, I would have said no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So that means nothing. Oh, wait a minute. No. Oh, they, you mean if they didn't, you're not saying if they asked you about me. Dan, you're just I'm saying really if anybody. Kidding. You're not elderly. You're not elderly. Well, I might be. You have like kids I, in high that's school. That's why I said I don't like using that phrase because it's more so just someone that's not in tune with. So ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be very clear. Sure. <laughs> Let's, no, I completely let's bring get in it. Sue. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Nothing it's, it's to too, say. Bad, too bad Sue's not here to bail you out. <laughs> now, if our listeners do uh, have questions, if they are thinking about putting the house on the market, how's the best way to get in touch with you? Because yeah. I'm, I'm assuming, I mean, from all the conversations we've had in the past, you'll help them by answering questions, walking them through the process. Oh, yeah. How do they reach out to you guys? They reach us at our cell. I'll start with Sue, 616-723-2400. She likes calls all through the day, right? All day. All hours of the night, too. Oh, okay. yeah. Call her as much as you want. As much as you want. <laughs> Mine is the secondary number. <laughs> 616-633-5880. And just a quick note, too. Even if you're not wanting to sell now, but you're just curious, like, okay, what is my value right now? What would you suggest that we do to sure. get ready? Maybe if it's in the future, we do free consultations too. No, okay, not free painting, free <laughs> consultation. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I know. Okay, I, I figured out. So if out. people are just curious, like, okay, you just talked about the seller's market. Where do you think I'm at? What would you sure. want to do? We can. We always sit down and talk with you. Excellent. Yeah. Ginger Herman from Suprins Group, Five Star Real Estate Leaders. Yeah. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. All right. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll be talking about our favorite paint projects of all time. That's just ahead. Stay tuned. If you want to take your DIY skills up a rung, the Repco Light Home Improvement Show is here to give you a boost. And we're back. And Haley, let's talk about what I think everybody's going to be really riveted by is our favorite paint projects of all times, right? Because <laughs> what's more time, exciting? I mean, we work in the paint industry. Yeah. We've done a lot of painting in our lives. I think it's interesting to reflect back and really point out the ones that have made the biggest impact. Sure. And, and right, I do think that is important. I, I think it really sounds ridiculous, it does. but but it is really cool. And for me, I've given it a little bit of thought. And yet yeah, easily my favorite project and favorite for the fun that I had doing it. Mm-hmm. The results were just so amazing. And then the end result, how we used the space afterward was every one of those were just top tier. It was so exciting. It was my basement repaint. I mean, of all things in the world. And no, that makes sense, though. Well, yeah, it was a really dungeon-y, kind of a dismal space. It was like you know, cinder black walls. Cinder black walls. It was kind of dirty, scary. It was very dark, you know, poorly lit. So part of the redo was, you know, light Lighting. bulbs in all yeah. the little fixtures where a light bulb could go. Cleaning you know? it. Yeah, cleaning it. That was a big part of it. And in fact, that seemed to be really monumental to me in the beginning. I was not looking forward to that whole cleaning process, yeah. but it was one of those things that I, whenever I get into a big project like that, I, I kind of start to become one with it <laughs> as it goes. And it really starts to, you know, I, I get really excited about it. And that cleaning, like I said, was so monumental to think about all the things I was going to have to do, the spider webs, the dirt, yes. the how am I going to get it flushed with water and get the water out? I didn't have a drain or a sump pump or anything like that. And so I ended up using shop vacs and stuff like that to pull the water up. And once I got going, I realized how much fun it was because I was seeing such great results. Yes. 
And once I got it literally clean and I had some dehumidifiers down there drying it up before Mm -hmm. I would get to the painting, it was so fun to just go down there and see a clean space. Well, yeah. I mean, that already takes it to a level where you're comfortable being in that space because you know that it's clean. Now, like there's just like a level of comfort that comes with that knowing and... Like you said, it's a basement, so you got cobwebs everywhere that you're dealing with. It's just usually not a fun space to go into. Right, and it was so great when it was clean. And then I went and I put a water-based paint on the floor. So concrete floor, I got that painted, got the walls painted, just the block walls. I went with the relatively inexpensive, you know, I think carefree, Repcolite's carefree satin sheen. I went with something with some shine to it so that it would wash up or at least resist dust and dirt because I knew that was coming back. The spiders weren't (laughs) eradicated from the home. But anyway, all of that cleaned up the space, brightened the space. It was unbelievable, you know, how how big a difference from the cinder block gray to just an off-white on the walls. What a big difference that made. It's not a light gray. No. We think about it maybe being a little bit light, but compared to paint colors, Mm -hmm. it's actually quite a medium or dark gray. Yeah, it was a huge difference. And then the use of the space, you know, it had been our laundry. Well, it was our laundry. All the time we were in that house, that was where our laundry was. That really helped that area feel better. But the big payoff was I gave the kids a playroom. They basically got half of the basement. Cool. We got shelves up and all of that. All their toys could go on the shelves. And the fun they had having a space like that. Yeah. They weren't getting yelled at for leaving their toys out all the time. Right. They could actually live in this space a little bit. They still did clean it up from time to time. But I they just loved having their own area that felt good no, and felt clean. Cool. They could see their stuff. Huge turnaround. And literally, I think the expense on that was under a under under 100, 150 bucks easily. Well, I mean, because it's just paint. Yeah, right? just paint. I mean, Tremendous difference. That was my favorite project. The project by which all my other projects are judged, are by. judged by. Yeah, <laughs> and they all fall short compared to that one. Such a huge turnaround. What was yours? All time favorite. Much paint smaller project. than yours. That I understand is like yeah. I mean, you're getting a whole new space because of that paint. Mm-hmm. Mine's not the same. <laughs> it's gonna sound silly in comparison, but honestly. Changing the back door, repainting the back door and making it nice because it was so scuffed when we moved into this house and it just it looked depressing. The door was a bummer. Now, so you went out and you bought a new door for this? Yeah. So I got a door that matched the house. Talk about that a minute because that was kind of cool, too. Yeah. And that was, you know, I think that impacts the whole scenario as well. But originally the door was like. Probably like 1980s or 1990s. It had like the frosted floral glass. And it. I live in a 1920s house, Mm -hmm. so it does not match the house, right? Like, Sure. It's a stark contrast to the rest of everything that's been left in its original condition. And adding in a back door that matched the house. So I got a craftsman door from a salvage company. That in um, in Kalamazoo, Kalamazoo, right? Yep. And... Really fun to shop for a door, especially when you're paying so little for it. Yeah. <laughs> I only spent $200 on the on the door. And normally these things are, you know, you can spend thousands of dollars yeah. on a front or back door. So you got this really cool door. You got it installed. And then you still are saying the painting of that really is what put yes, it over the top. And exactly. it's a back door. How in the world can this have such a big impact? Well, that's the door that I always come through. So I almost never use the front door. We're mm-hmm. always entering the back door and we come home or leave. And so that was the first or last impression of the house every single day was that yeah. back door. And when it's depressing, it's really, it's amazing how much that actually affects your mood. No, I think that is so cool. Just painting this entry door. Yes. And it's the back door, like you're saying. So it's the least impact curb exactly. appeal wise. And like, yet for you personally, it sets the tone Every time you get home, it there's makes that me little, happy. Yeah, just that little bit. Yes. You know, no matter what your day was like working with me, <laughs> you go home and there's at least that yeah. to kind of put you. It's like, I don't know. It's the first impression and it sets the tone for the rest of the house. Well, I love the concept because, you, like you just said, it's the first impression, but it's not the first impression for a lot of your guests, really. No, yeah. It's your first impression. Yes. 
And that still matters. So yeah. often we talk about projects and we talk about getting the front door painted or whatever painted. Yeah. And we're a lot of the times talking about from the perspective of Curbapil, other people. Yeah. And, their, yeah. Their first impression of your home. Yep. This one, not so much that. No. And yet of all the projects you've done, you've painted your kitchen, you've done other things. Yeah. You still say this is a one of the biggest, the biggest. Yes. And yeah, with that said, think about that. $30, whatever, for a quart exactly. of paint it's a and quart the time and the tools. Paint, and it makes me happy every single day. So your projects don't have to be massive to have huge impact. Paint can do a ton. And, yeah, there's just two different projects that really made a lot of difference to us. Who knows what your next project yeah. is and what kind of difference it could make. Anyway, Haley, that's all the time we've got. We're going to wrap it up. If you want to catch this one again, you can find it online at RepcoLite.com. Whatever you do today, make sure paint's a part of it. The RepcoLite and Port City Paint Stores are open until 3, waiting to help. I'm Dan Hansen. I'm Haley Johnson. Thanks for listening.